Hi, hello. Welcome to this video lecture series on mechanics of materials. So today I'll be discussing about bending stresses in beams. To start with, we know what is a beam. Beam is nothing but a structure member subjected to transverse load. So whenever a beam or a part of a beam is said to be under pure bending. So what do you mean by pure bending? Other than just bending moment, there won't be any other type of loading. So such as there won't be any shear force, there won't be any axial load. So if a beam is subjected to only bending moment, then the stresses induced in that beam will be bending stress. So now, what is that bending stress? Say for example, if you consider a beam subjected to bending moment, so here this is subjected to hogging bending moment. So hogging bending moment means, and we know uh, we have to consider one layer here that is nothing but neutral axis. What is that neutral axis of all the different layers it, the beam is made of at one particular point, there won't be any stress or strain. So the point where the, or the layer where there won't be any stress or strain is nothing but neutral axis or neutral layer. So above and below that neutral axis, there will be tensile and compressive stress depending on the type of loading or the depending on the bending that takes place. So now say for example, if you consider hogging bending moment as shown in figure. So for all symmetrical sections or for all symmetrical cross sections, that bending stress will be equal above if we consider as positive below that neutral axis will be negative. So half will be under tension or half will be under compression in case of symmetrical cross section. So now in case of hogging, above that neutral axis, it will be uh, tensile and below that one will be compressive. Now, if you consider uh, the same thing in case of a sagging bending moment, if this is sagging, so again here, all layers below the neutral axis will be under tension and our layers above that will be under compression. Therefore, here this will be under tensile stress and towards that center of curvature, that layers will be in compression and the stress induced in those layers will be compressive stress. So now before deriving this expression for pure bending, we have to know the assumptions that we have to make. So these are the important assumptions that we have to keep in mind before obtaining that famous bending formula. So that is also known as Euler's bending formula. So for that one, what are the assumptions? First and foremost, the material is homogeneous and isotropic. So for all that, uh, um, uh, what is that one? For all the derivations in mechanics of materials, this is the most important assumption. That is material is homogeneous and isotropic. That is, what do you mean by homogeneous? There, the structure of the material will be same throughout. So isotropic, is nothing but the properties of the material will be same throughout. Then the material is perfectly elastic and obeys Hooke's law. So that means material is loaded within elastic limit. So that means whatever we are considering in mechanics of materials, it is up to elastic limit only. So then the beam is initially stride and they will not be under any type of stress. So beam is made up of number of layers and undergo bending independently. That means each layer is independent of one another. Then bending takes place on arc of circle and the radius of curvature is very large compared to the dimensions of the beam. So then next one, normal plane sections before bending remain normal and plane even after bending. So, and this already we have taken care that is Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity is same in tension and compression. So with these assumptions, we have to derive this Euler's Bernoulli bending equation. So what is that? So here the various notations that we use in practice or M is nothing but resisting moment developed inside the material against applied bending moment and is numerically equal to bending moment applied. So that is nothing but Newton millimeter. I is nothing but moment of inertia in mm to the power of 4. Sigma is nothing but direct stress. It can be tensile or compressive. 
depending on where we are considering whether it is above neutral axis or below neutral axis and also depends on the type of loading in which direction it is bending then y is nothing but distance from center of neutral axis to the distance from the layer that is neutral axis so e is nothing but x modulus of modulus of elasticity or is radius of curvature of neutral layer now we have to obtain relation between bending stress and radius of curvature so consider a straight beam okay so subject to bending moment so now in this if we consider an element pq or s elemental length pq or s an element pq or s and if it is subjected to bending in the side view if you show that one here this is nothing but p dash this is q dash r dash s dash and this is nothing but here at certain distance that is at a distance of y from the neutral axis a layer okay is an elemental layer ef is considered so after bending that ef takes the shape like this c dash f dash so when x when it is extended backwards it will meet at a point that is nothing but center of curvature so from center of curvature to that neutral axis that distance is represented by radius of curvature and the angle subtended let this be an elemental angle d theta now the length of the neutral axis remains because as i told you there won't be any stress or strain along the neutral axis therefore here the length of that neutral axis along in this length there won't be any stress or strain so whatever length we have before bending same length after bending we will have in case of neutral axis now if we consider this one what is that this is this element what we have considered ef so that is under strain so what is that strain in that element strain of the element ef that epsilon is given by change in length to original length what is that change in change in length change in length is nothing but e dash f dash minus ef divided by ef so what from here we can make out e dash f dash from high school geometry s is equal to r theta this is d theta and this radius from here to here it is r plus y so total radius from center of curvature to that layer e dash f dash is nothing but capital r plus y therefore this arc length will be r plus y into d theta so that is nothing but new length e dash f dash original length original length as already have told you here this neutral axis there won't be any change in length so therefore that remains as neutral axis same length therefore that length is equal to we can take this length equal to this neutral axis length because there won't be any change in length therefore that neutral axis length almost also equal to ef so from here that is given by r into d theta because as there is no change in length of this neutral axis therefore that new neutral axis will be the same length that is given by r d theta by substituting that r plus y d theta minus r d theta divided by r d theta we will get y by r so we know from hooke's law what is that one stress is directly proportional to strain with that we will get x modulus x modulus e is equal to sigma by epsilon where e is nothing but elastic constant so now we have strain here now by making use of this elastic constant strain epsilon also is equal to sigma by x modulus now we have what time strain as y by r by substituting in here that y by r is equal to sigma by e so that is nothing but sigma by y is equal to e by r this is the first relation that is the relation between stress and radius of curvature or stress and x modulus in case of a member subjected to bending that is pure bending next we have to relate that bending moment and radius of curvature so now if we consider in that beam if we consider a portion of that in that again in the side view if we consider an elemental area da at a distance y from the neutral axis then 
what is that force of the element because whenever we want moment we require force and perpendicular distance to obtain that force we have the stress so stress we have obtained expression so what is that force in this elemental length elemental area that force in elemental area df it is represented by df is equal to stress into elemental area that is sigma into da now moment due to this force df is represented by elemental moment dm and that's equal to force into distance so force is acting here into y so that is nothing but df into y now if we substitute that value of df so now bending moment in that element is given by dm is equal to sigma into da into y so that moment is nothing but that whatever the force we have obtained elemental force into y so we obtain that moment as dm is equal to sigma into da into y now what is sigma sigma already we have obtained relation between sigma and radius of curvature by making use of that relation sigma is nothing but e by r into y by substituting the value of sigma in this we will get dm is equal to e by r into y square into da this is for one layer since that beam is made up of so many such layers we can integrate so e by r or the integral of that y square da so e by r is constant we know that all that integral of y square da is nothing but total moment of inertia i so now if we simplify we will get m by i is equal to e by r m we have here i is this one m by i is equal to e by r that is already that e by r is nothing but sigma by y therefore that euler bernoulli's equation can be written as m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r where m is the bending moment i is moment of inertia sigma is the stress induced y is nothing but distance from central axis to the layer considered if nothing is mentioned it is distance from the central axis to the farthest layer then e is hence modulus and r is nothing but radius of curvature now we have to know what is that section modulus section modulus of a beam is the ratio of ratio of moment of inertia of the cross section of the beam about the neutral axis to the distance of the farthest fiber from neutral axis that is nothing but i by y if y is the distance from central axis to farthest layer then section modulus is usually represented by z z is equal to i by y in some places and in some textbooks and some people take that y as c also that c or y is nothing but distance from central axis to the farthest layer now more the section modulus more will be the moment of resistance because from that m by i is equal to sigma by y m is equal to sigma into i by y so i by y is nothing but the section modulus z so if we write m is equal to sigma into z so as the section modulus increases moment resistance or moment m also increases so this or we know that is if the section is symmetrical about the neutral axis then y max is same for top most as well as bottom most fiber for that for example if we consider a rectangular cross section neutral axis and central axis will be at the center now from there the top portion will be at a height equal to that height by 2 if height of that rectangle or depth of the rectangle is h then y max in will be h by 2 so if top portion is in tension then that corresponds to uh, tensile that is we usually represent that by y tension pt a uh, yt at the bottom it is y compression and here in case of rectangle that y tension will be equal to y compression that's equal to that depth by 2 if the section is not symmetrical about neutral axis then y max is different for top most as well as bottom most fibers then z is calculated for tension compression separately so now section modulus of 
different uh, section modulus of different cross sections so to start with let us consider the section modulus for a uh, circle of sorry let us consider section modulus for a circle of cross section so for solid circle of cross section moment of inertia i is pi d to the power of 4 by 64 that z is equal to section modulus for circle of solid circle of section z is equal to i by y maximum i z is nothing but i is nothing but pi d to the power of 4 by 64 that y max is y max is nothing but half of this that is d by 2 Now, if we simplify, we will get pi d cube by 32. Next, for hollow circle of section, z z is equal to so z is equal to again i by y only. So here i will be pi by 64 d naught to the power of 4 minus d a to the power of 4. So that divided by d naught by 2 will give us that section modulus as pi by 32. d not to the power of 4 minus d to the power of 4 by d not then if we consider rectangular regular rectangular cross section that is moment of inertia for rectangular cross section will be bh cube by 12 so this if you are taking this as depth as h then bh cube by 12 if you are taking that as d then uh, bd cube by 12 so here we are taken h f of bh cube by 12 divided by The distance from central axis or neutral axis to fourth edge layer it is h by two. If we substitute, we will get z is equal to b h square by six for rectangular section. For hollow rectangular section, so outer will be b h cube b. This is h b h cube by twelve minus this portion has to be subtracted. So this is nothing but b h is nothing but this small h. So minus b h cube by 12 that reduces to capital b h cube by 12 minus small b h cube by 12 divided by capital h by 2. So that reduces to b h cube or capital b h cube minus small b h cube divided by 6. So now moment of resistance. So this already I told you moment of resistance of a section is defined as the maximum bending moment it can withstand. Before failure, its unit is newton meter. Now, what is flexural rigidity? Flexural rigidity is nothing but product of Young's modulus and moment of inertia. So, if it is per unit length, then it is E I by L. Flexural rigidity is a product of Young's modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia of the beam section per unit length of the beam. So, if you are not considering L. then it is a product of e and i will be the flexural rigidity it is also known as uh, beam stiffness its unit is newton meter then what is modulus of rupture it is defined as the bending stress which causes failure of the beam section and its unit is newton per mm square so now here different cases i have considered so this is not required actually this already we have discussed in While drawing shear force and bending moment diagram, but for solving numericals and bending stress, we have to know the relation for maximum bending moment in case of a beam with simple supports and point rod at the center. So we can make out that uh, maximum bending moment for simply supported at with point rod at the center will be W L by four or F L by four. Next. Simply supported beam with a point load at distances E and V from supports. Instead of distances E and V, we can also be given as L1, L2. So then maximum bending moment. This we have to again remember for solving numericals. That is nothing but if load is W, then it is W A B by L. If instead of W, if it is F, F A B by L total length. If instead of uh, yeah W, if it is F. F and instead of E and B, if it is L1 L2, then F L1 L2 divided by L. So we have to remember this maximum bending moment for a simply supported beam when the load is not acting at the middle or at the center. Then we have to know the bending moment 
for a simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load. So the again we have, this we have learnt in our shuffles and bending moment diagrams. So maximum bending moment for a simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load is it will be at the center. It is W L square by eight. We have to remember this relation also. So then if you consider a cantilever beam, so the maximum bending moment will be at the fixed end and that is given by W into L. So maximum bending moment for a, simple, for a cantilever beam is W into L if load is W. If the load is given as F, it is F into L. Now, if it is a cantilever beam with uniformly distributed load, then again, the maximum bending moment at the fixed end will be WL square by two. So these standard relations, we have to remember for solving numericals. So now say for example, if we consider this numerical in which a rectangular section beam 300 by 400 mm simply supported over a span of six meters, the beam carries a central concentrated load of 50 kilonewton. So we have to find out maximum stress in the beam. And we also have to draw or sketch the bending stress distribution. So here, this is straightforward problem. So we have to write that bending formula. What is that? M by I is equal to sigma by Y. So what are the parameters that are given? So with the given rectangular cross section, we can find out I. I is nothing but BD cube by 12. B is 300, D is 400, BD cube by 12. And then this is a case of simply supported beam with point order to center. We know that maximum bending moment will be at the point of application of float. For that formula is MB is equal to WL by four. So we know that W is 15 to 10 to the power of three. L is given as 6,000 mm by substituting those values. Here it is substituted in meters. So 50 into six divided by four, that will give us bending moment so many kilonewton meter. So by converting this into newton millimeter, we can write this as 75 to 10 to the power of six newton millimeter. Now, what is that formula M by I is equal to sigma by Y. So therefore sigma is equal to M by I into Y. So M is nothing but already we have calculated 75 to 10 to the power of six and Y is nothing but as I already discussed, for a rectangular cross section, y for neutral axis will be that depth by two. So that is nothing but 200 mm because total is 400 depth by two. So that y value we know. Then what is that? This i by y is nothing but z. So what is that z? Z is equal to I is BHQ, BHQ by 12 and Y is H by 2. So this reduces to BH square by 6. We know the value of B and H with that Z we will get. Either by substituting M and Z with the here, we will get that bending stress. Or if you want, we can substitute the value of Y here, moment of inertia here, and bending moment here. With that also we will get the same value, 9.375. Newton per mm square. As I, uh, this uh, triangular cross section, the stress will be equal in tension or compression. So by just taking, if you have taken first that it is under compression, therefore if the stress is 9.375 and for the uh, tensile stress also, it will be 9.375 only with positive sign. Because only change here, Okay, what is that one? Instead of Y max, whatever we have substituted, here the Y remains same, it is 200 only. Therefore, both in tension and compression, we will get bending stress as 9.375 Newton per mm square only. So to draw the stress distribution with reference to this vertical, vertical line, and from the intersecting point of that vertical with the neutral axis, one side, we have to show that Tensile stress here, compressive stress here. There is nothing wrong if we show the other side, this side, tensile, this side, compressive, but it cannot be in the same direction. This is the stress distribution and it does not depend on 
the cross section irrespective of the cross section stress distribution will plot will be like this only so the next problem so the difference between previous problem and this problem is in the previous problem it was a beam with simple support with a point toward at the center whereas here this is a rectangular beam again and it is simply supported with uniformly distributed load of 10 uh, sorry uniformly distributed load of w kilo newton per meter so now the stress is given as 10 mpa so now the important thing is when the given stress okay so with the given cross section we will get the value of i we will get the value of y in term we can we can get the value of z so we know that sigma is equal to m by z so sigma is given as 10 mpa z is nothing but b h square by 6 b you know b we know h we know with that we will get z knowing that z and sigma we will get bending moment m so for a uniform simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load we know m is equal to wl square by 8 so there l is given okay then bending moment m we have calculated with that we can find out intensity of load see here bending moment is nothing but wl square by 8 for a simply supported beam with point toward at the center with the uniformly distributed load by substituting the value of l we will get 4.5 w so so many kilo newton meter or into 10 to the power of 6 newton millimeter now z i have already told you it is nothing but i by y for rectangular cross section it is b h square by 6 knowing the value of b and h by substituting we will get z as 8 into 10 to the power of 6 mm cube now we know z we know uh, what is that one m with that we can find out stress sigma is equal to m by z okay so the value of m we have to substitute the value of uh, what is that one it will be in terms of w value of bending moment will be in terms of w stress is given as 10 and z value is 18 to 10 to the power of 6 if we simplify this we will get w is equal to 17.78 kilo newton per meter now to draw the stress distribution this is similar to previous problem here also it is rectangular cross section from neutral axis so when it is not mentioned which is in which is under tension which is under compression we can take half under tension half under compression here top portion is considered as uh, compressive stress and the bottom portion as tensile stress so this is the stress distribution for the given rectangular cross section